often they come from professional football and uh, we end up doing the same or very, very similar uh, training tasks with our nine, 10 year old players. No? So we are demanding uh, some ways to solve uh, football problems that are not really adjusted to the age of the players, maybe because of the amount of players that are involved, maybe because of the amount of spaces, maybe because of the contents that you can develop with uh, those training tasks, um, maybe because of the rules are very complex for their age. There are many reasons that could make one task be uh, unadjusted or well-adjusted for every age. But the first thing we need to um, have always in our mind is um, that we need to adapt the training content, the concepts, and how are we going to train it uh, to the age of the players, because this will tell us uh, the needs that they have. Um, okay, then another thing that is important is to understand, from our point of view, it's very important to understand, to understand the preference in, in this sport, in football. Um, why? Why is it relevant to understand the preference in football? If we understand the preference in football, we can define the development stages of the players um, according to some clear criteria. And we can follow the same because sometimes throughout the academy, uh, during some years, we have one preference and then we prioritize another thing and then it's, it's unclear, the development process of the players. Um, if the preference is clear, how we want to see this sport, it's also easier to, to um, organize uh, the training contents, no? what we are talking. It's possible to plan, it's possible or it's easier to program when the vision is clear. Because if you want to work one idea about, uh, about support, one concrete idea of support, because how they understand the game. And the other one is thinking about how many sprints the kids uh, should do. And the other one is thinking how many touches uh, the kids are able to juggle. If we take different principles, uh, it's going to be very difficult to, to organize. And the same with the training methodology. If we agree on the preference of the sport, it is uh, also possible to develop a training methodology that is adapted to the, to the characteristics of the sport that these players are initiating themselves or that they are trying to master. So um, there are a lot of proposals uh, in this sense. And uh, there are some proposals focused on the technical skills. We have all experienced that. Also many proposals based on the physical development of the players. And we also probably know that. Um, but from our point of view, um, the preference in football is not uh, physical because you don't need to be you don't need to get to your limit physically to be able to play good football of course you like you need to be uh, from a holistic point of view you need to be good in many ways but the preference in football because of the rules spaces amount of players etc 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 uh, it's especially complex, not only difficult, but it's especially complex. So the game comprehension has um, a strong, it's, a, it's the strongest component in this sport. This doesn't mean if we take the game comprehension as the main or as, as the preference in this sport, it doesn't mean that we don't need, that we, 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 we can forget physical preparation or physical development of the players or that we totally forget the technical skills and it, it doesn't really matter at all. It doesn't mean that at all, like uh, first thing we said, no, we need players that are good from a complete, um, from a holistic point of view, global point of view. But when it comes to defining the stages, creating a program and developing a training methodology specific for this sport um, for our, for, for the academy, um, one important idea from our point of view is to uh, adjust all these things to the, to the preference of, the, of how the sport is. And this should be different than even handball or, of course, uh, individual sports or, or other sports that are very different from the, the one that we are talking here. Um, if we take the game comprehension, this 
can help us to define stages, as we said. So um, if we jump into, into, the, um, into the stages, um, or before we jump into the stages, we can uh, think about the evolution uh, of the psychology of the players, no? Like until, and this is not mathematics, eh? but more or less until nine, 10 years old, uh, the kids are in a, some kind of egocentric phase or egocentric stage, let's say, where they understand me and the ball. This is how they understand. And this is not a problem. This is not a problem. This is just how the kids are. So what we should do from our point of view in the planning is to prioritize those training contents that relate a lot the player with the ball. Why? Because uh, at the end, at this age, they are initiating themselves into this sport, six, seven, eight years old. They are starting to play this sport. They need to learn as Com we commonly say the basics. No? So uh, they need to learn the basic abilities to develop themselves in this sport, to survive in this sport. And uh, what do they want? They want the ball. So it's important that we as a coaches, we give the ball for the players. We need to give the ball for them. And therefore, we are going to train those contents that relate the player on the ball in attack, in defense, but we are going to prioritize those contents. We're not going to train like very collective things or a strategical thing. No, like uh, at the end, it's important to learn those aspects. However, we need to think also about the training methodology because if we say, okay, we are going to prioritize uh, content, running with the ball. If the training methodology is not adjusted at all to the sport that they are trying to play and to the age that they are, and we are going to have a problem in the learning. No? For example, if I always train in a situation where, where there is no opponent at all and there are no even teammates, there is nothing. I'm just me and the ball and, and nothing else. Probably it will help me to improve the relationship with the ball, but not necessarily uh, improving as fast as we could in football. Because when we put this kid in the football match, there will be opponents that won't let you go forward and there will be even teammates that may want to take your ball because in that moment they don't even make a clear clear difference between teammates and opponents sometimes no so for example if we um, if we take a look at this um, one second i'll put the, the quality for example if we look at this no uh, okay, these kids start to play. And in the beginning, they were very organized. But you can see, no, like, what is, what is their focus? They are mostly, like, going after the ball. Here, already, a little bit, like, you can see the game is not, it's far from, from organized. And it should be. I mean, this is how they understand the game. They don't really make a clear difference between... Uh, teammates or, or opponents they just uh, think on what they can do the ball they have some intentions of uh, trying to progress of trying to steal the ball uh, sometimes like often the kids want to like kick the ball away so there are some intentions from here that we need to enhance some intentions that we need to modify a little bit uh, you can see that they are like players, for example, that sometimes uh, they may even disconnect a little bit from the game. So this is how a, uh, how it goes in a very early stages. No, so we need to think what content we can work here. Um, then there is a second stage of the players where uh, we focus, uh, or that the player starts to think not only on himself. He still think of himself, but it's me, the ball and my teammates. So I still want to solve the problems by myself, but I start to understand that I cannot solve everything by myself. So um, I start to cooperate with my teammates. Um, I will try still to do my 
my my action, no, my my moment of shining, and then I will uh, I will try to play in cooperation. We are in this transition. We are, it's not collective yet, but we start to cooperate with my teammates. So here we can work uh, same or similar contents than before, um, adding new ideas uh, inside, but uh, similar contents plus new contents that before it was not good timing to work, you know. And in these years, there, there starts to be the transition to Figure 11 that even they don't understand yet the game as collective. Um, uh, well, uh, we can start to, we, we start to get closer to that stage. Um, for example, if we, if we look at uh, some example of this age, like 13 uh, year old players, here you can see, no, for example, Gabi. And you can see that the, the space is much more organized. The players are able to give width. They are having some depth. They can be in diagonal. They can be separate from the player with the ball. They, the defenders uh, start to defend uh, also a bit more uh, in block. They start to be coverages. There are passes with advantage for the teammate, etc., etc. No? And they are mastering ideas that uh, they should have learned before or that they are learning now. No? For example, uh, here, making the first touch towards the advantage, towards a space with more advantage, uh, learning to run with the ball with the furthest leg from the opponent, changing the direction of the ball with one touch. So a lot of ideas that are interesting uh, here to see the differences uh, uh, on the way to comprehend the game. And finally, we have the collective stage here. Like um, it's it's clear the meaning. Now the game it's like fully organized. It's much more complex. Uh, more players. Um, uh, we have more. Like we need to stay in balance according to more players. We can do things for the benefit of the team, not for the immediate benefit of myself, or not only in cooperation with one teammate, but in cooperation with more teammates. And this is uh, something um, that it's different from the previous stages. No? Okay. Then, um, um, okay. Then this is um, uh, something that is important. Will be will be important to decide what contents we're going to work. From here, once are clear the um, how the player evolves, how the evolution of the game comprehension is uh, when it comes to football, here we can uh, jump into some uh, of the most important blocks of content. We will see all the blocks of content. We will see uh, all the contents inside every block, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But here we are introducing. Uh, the stages of the players and the most important things to work. I will exp I will try to explain as brief as possible. Here, um, I will start first with the player um, player perspective, player approach when it comes to the training contents, and then I will go into the team perspective. Okay, from the player perspective, when it comes to what we call initiation stage, means that the stage where the player is initiating uh, himself or herself in football, uh, it takes usually the stage between six, seven to 13 years of age, approximately. We are working the individual fundamentals. What means here the individual fundamentals? Means uh, those basic abilities that the player needs to learn how to play football. So for, uh, for example, uh, how to make the first touch, how to pass, how to mark an opponent, how to unmark from the opponent, how to um, look for information, how to uh, protect the ball, how to run with the ball, how to choose between running with the ball or passing the ball to my teammate, how to actually pass the ball to my teammate. So this is um, the basic things. And we are not going to separate in the sense that, okay, the defenders are going to be marking, are, are going to be doing marking and, and 1v1 defending, and the forwards are going to be dribbling and shooting. No, at this age, we are going to give 
the possibility for all the players to learn all the basic uh, individual fundamentals that we have in football. No? And uh, obviously there are uh, more things that we will show in a minute, but uh, this is the main characteristic during the initiation stage. What are we going to do later during the specialization stage? We are going to be working the individual fundamentals by position per position. What is this? This is the evolution of the, of the individual fundamentals. Once we have given the base to all the players of support, marking, 1v1 defending, 1v1 attacking, etc., 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 now we are going to um, uh, individualize that, in, uh, that information for every zone of the pitch. So, for example, uh, when it comes to support, the characteristics of the support are different. If you talk about one central back, one midfielder, one advanced midfielder, one winger, one striker, depending the zone of the pitch, not the profile of the player, the zone of the pitch where they are, the considerations of how to, or the characteristics of the supports that uh, they should give are different because the zones of the pitch where they support is different. So um, uh, the types of support are going to be different. That's why we need one base, one base from the initiation stage where the players have experience in the in the fundamentals. They, they know uh, the basic things from the game and now we can make this evolution. Now I put the example with support that we need to do with every single thing. It's not the same how to control the ball as a central back or as a winger. It's not the same uh, how to pass the ball as a fullback or as a striker. Like every single ability has uh, an evolution to the individual fundamentals per position. And we have these years before the performance stage uh, where the players play in football 11 to um, make this evolution. Um, as as we are uh, writing on the chat, we will have quickly uh, later the Q&A section. So please prepare your questions and, and feel free to ask if something is uh, unclear or, or you want to discuss something. Um, and when we go to the performance stage, so in general, plus 19 year old, we are going to be working individual fundamentals for the performance of this player. What does that mean? Means that if I have um, uh, a striker like, um, like Haaland or a striker like Benzema, I'm going to be working or I'm going to work different fundamentals for the performance of this, of this player. Because with Haaland, probably we need to work more ideas of uh, movements to generate advantage for himself, to attack the space behind the defensive line, um, uh, to uh, like uh, to concepts about uh, shooting, to end up shooting, uh, to be a killer in the box, in crossing ball situations. And with Benzema, mm, some contents can be similar at the end they are strikers, but Benzema, many contents will be more towards the association, how to play uh, in association with the teammates, in relation with the teammates, uh, ideas of support, this will be uh, more relevant for a player like Benzema because of his characteristics. No? So this is going to, uh, or this example may help us to understand um, the difference of every stage. Let's say that these individual fundamentals for the performance of the player, it's like one step forward from the individual fundamentals per position, which are general for this uh, for for some position in the pitch. Uh, when it comes to the team, we will start during the initiation stage with some um, basic team fundamentals. What means these basic team fundamentals? Obviously, the priority is going to be um, to develop the player from the individual point of view. No, because we said that the player is mostly individual or I mean egocentric or mostly uh, summative at the end of the initiation stage. So uh, the big part or big amount of time uh, that we will work uh, in initiation stage is going to be focused on the individual fundamentals. However, 
to facilitate that um, that we that the players can learn these individual fundamentals, we need some basic, very basic principles of organization. For example, with the nine-year-old players, we need to make sure, eight, nine-year-old players, we need to make sure that they are minimally separated from each other, minimally separate, that they learn to play from different spaces without a closed structure, nothing else, nothing else than that, just from different spaces. Why? Why do we need this? Because if they are all gathering around the wall, around the wall, it's more difficult to learn the most important fundamentals in that period, at the age of eight, nine, which are running with the ball, um, surpassing an opponent, etc. There is no space to do this because it's not one v one; it's it's one against four. No, because you have a lot of players there. So um, when we, or for example, the idea of moving together forward, no or moving together backwards as well. Why do we want this? Because we want to do transitions like uh, Atletico Madrid? No, 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 not, nothing like that. It's because we want the players to stay connected with the game. We know, because when you observe a football game, you can see that when the players are eight and they are very far from the ball, they disconnect. And if they disconnect, they have less possibilities to do, to perform football actions. So we need, in this sense, some very basic team fundamentals in every phase of the game to help the players to stay connected and learn the individual fundamentals that are important to improve uh, in this stage. Um, second point, in, from the team point of view, a specialization stage, team fundamentals. As we said, here we are... Um, we are already jumping into football 11. So here the team fundamentals should help my players to stay well organized so that we can learn the individual fundamentals per position. If we don't have any, any type of organization as a team, it's difficult that the players understand in what zone of the pitch we're playing because we are just moving without any, without any sense. No? Team fundamentals can help us in this sense. Also, they, the team fundamentals can help us to develop some team identity in terms of, uh, of, of how we play. No? It's not identity in general. No? Uh, the team fundamentals can help us to develop how we play, how we want to play uh, as a team. And this uh, should be also uh, guiding um, or, or, or leading the process towards improving the individual fundamentals per position. And, um, and finally, in the last spot, we have the idea of uh, team system versus team system. Here is, we are going to work team principles with the intention of uh, winning the next opponent. So, of course, we will need to work when we are in performance stage, some team fundamentals of how we want to play. But uh, week by week, we will need to train or we need to prioritize the training of those team fundamentals that allow us to beat the opponent next week. Because now what we need is a performance from the players and as a team. So uh, we are going to uh, give a lot of importance to train this. And we are not going to spend so much time training individual fundamentals, individual fundamental proposition, like no time for this. There is no time. We may be able to work some individual fundamentals for the performance, and big amount of time will be uh, focused on the on the team principles. So, uh, like uh, we will discuss about this a bit more deeper, more deep. But uh, most of the like the big block, the big block in the initiation stage is going to be this one. The big block in the specialization stage is going to be this one, but a bit more together with the team fundamentals. And in the performance stage, the biggest block is going to be the team system versus team system. No? This is a way to organize the blocks of contents in our mind. Uh, okay. Mm, then, about this planning, if we continue with the, with the introduction, probably we have already started, started to notice, but what do we, uh, what do we aim? by having this plan and having these objectives and these training contents. With the training contents, 
what we want is uh, during the initiation stage is to um, uh, increase the amount uh, of uh, abilities that the players can have. We are going to work, we are going to make sure that if you come to our club, your kid is going to have the chance to experience um, the trainings in a significant way of all the abilities that a player needs in football. And in the future, we are going to specialize in some positions and in the future, we are going to specialize this player in some things that give performance, but in the future, in the future. In initiation stage, we need to give as many possibilities as possible uh, for the players to learn the maximum amount of, uh, of abilities. Um, basically, we want to open the possibilities to learn, to learn. As we get closer to the performance stage, what we need to do is the opposite. Uh, in the performance stage, what we need to do is to start to reduce the decision making of the player. And often, often when you look at trainings, the process is all the way around. Like the process is when they are kids, we try to reduce a lot of the decision making and close it and, and so on. And enhance those things that the player is already doing well at the age of 10 or 12, more or less well. Um, and from our point of view, this is a mistake. When, when they are 10 years old, even they are beating other players, this kid needs to learn many abilities in football because in the future, he's going to need it or she's going to need it. And near the performance or in the performance, we are going to reduce this decision-making and even, even we are going to hide or eliminate those behaviors that make him show an ability that he's lacking or something that he's not really good at with the intention of uh, increasing the performance of this player during the game. You know? So the objective changes uh, when it comes to the players and it affects how we plan. When, if we continue with the idea of the blocks, I will try to explain uh, shortly because this is, uh, we will open it uh, in the first sessions, but during the initiation stage, uh, we have these different blocks. This pyramid with different blocks, um, it's a way to organize all the training contents. Not like those are the training contents that we need to plan and we need to train on the pitch, on the, on the, on the training ground. So as you can see, there are like, there are individual fundamentals, team fundamentals, coordination, so the, the motricity of the players, how to run as a football player with the ball, without the ball. Uh, we are going to be training the perception skills, very important block at this stage to start to develop. Um, the physical fitness is not going to be trained in a specific way. Like no, we are not going to train the endurance uh, with the nine-year-old kids. It will be uh, by playing, they will get the endurance that they need. So uh, we are not going to plan that specifically. And we need to plan something that usually is uh, not appearing in any a coaching plan in the clubs is how we are going to work values and habits of the players. Often we say, no, the players need to, because we don't know, or probably they will not be professional, we, we need to create better humans. But then we are not doing anything. There is nothing sequenced, organized, plan of uh, when we are going to train certain values uh, according to the age of the players and, and therefore what actions we are going to do. There is nothing. No? In our opinion, this is extremely important as well. Um, uh, yes. And then when we go into the specialization stage, uh, it's a bit similar, but if you remember the previous one, uh, we have reduced a little bit the time for the coordination abilities or motricity. We have reduced the time for the individual or, or basic fundamentals. And here we uh, spend much more time for the individual fundamental proposition. This is the core block of this stage. We increase quite a lot the time for the team fundamentals. And we also uh, increase time that we work specifically the physical fitness, not continuing with the idea of not to bring the players to the limit, to their limits physically, 
but uh, making sure that our players don't get injured because football is a very um, it's a it's a sport that provokes a lot of uh, injuries. So trying to keep the players healthy and trying to improve uh, also certain characteristics that are important. And we continue with the work in values. All these blocks um, will have a, a relation to every stage that we have told. So for example, I will try to um, uh, um, uh, yeah, well, we answered the question. Thank you, uh, Enrique. But uh, here, when we talk uh, basic basic fundamentals here or individual fundamentals here is the same. You know, it's the it's like the evolution. Yeah, but uh, just for for you to have it in mind. And therefore, what we're going to do in this course is to go through every age group. Maybe we can unite like two age groups together or something like this. We are going to unite uh, the two age groups and we're going to go one by one in relation to the main blocks. No? Main blocks, perception abilities, individual fundamentals and or individual fundamentals per position, team fundamentals, motricity and or physical abilities uh, or, or physical fitness uh, training and values for every age group. What does that mean, for example? No, just to put an example roughly, and then we can go uh, deeper and we can open it slowly in the course. Uh, for example, we take the age group under six, under seven. Uh, and here we have the block of uh, perception skills. No, Block perception. So as you can see here, perception skills. Good. Then. Here we, you can see that we have uh, the phase of the game. Here we have the exact content inside the perception block. So how to look for information for the non-ball possessor, for the ball pos defending of the ball possessor, what you need to look if you are ball possessor or if you are not the ball possessor in the attacking phase in terms of near space elements and why we mm, why we prioritize those things? Because they are under six, under seven. We cannot demand to the under seven players to look very far away or anything, but they need to look something. They need to be trained uh, to look something and that looking something will help them to play better with the ball uh, or to, uh, for example, get more the ball. If you look uh, some specific things, it can be useful in attack or in defense as well. And the key point that we will uh, give you uh, after every after every session of the course is the whole table with the specific concepts already put here. This is not an absolute uh, or a closed plan. You can modify it from here as much as you want. No, it's a proposal, but it's a proposal that is made. No, it's a proposal that is made, that is adapted to the players, and that is adapted to the sport that we are trying to master. Now, let's try to move forward, and I will show um, another example with individual fundamentals. Individual fundamentals for the same uh, age group or, or uh, sub-stage. You know? Individual fundamentals under six, under seven. Here we have the phase, attack or defense. Here we have the training content, ball protection, uh, well, drive uh, or running with the ball, no, depending on running with the ball. When we talk about dribbling or dribble, it's about surpassing an opponent. The action of surpassing an opponent um, could be one on one, for example. Um, when to pass or when to progress yourself, um, or or like progress individual progression. And uh, in the defensive phase, we mostly include the idea of track. Track or tracking is uh, related to the idea of defending the ball possessor, how to defend one-on-one. -on -one. We, uh, we need to help the players to go and track tightly uh, the player on the ball. This is an ability. Why we work this? Because they want the ball. So we are going to help them to know how to track the player on the ball 
um, but with the priority of not getting beaten easily because what is the the, the usually the um, the dynamic that the players go and try to steal the ball and if you just go boom and try to steal the ball the attacking player pop up and already surpass you and you cannot get the ball so <clears throat> um, this is one content that it's uh, appropriate to work in this stage only the initial concepts only the maybe one two three concepts very small things that uh, we can start to to work we are going to do the same with uh, all the um, all the stages that we have here with all the blocks of content that you have here so in my opinion there is a lot of information that could be uh, valuable for your coaching line for your uh, style of coaching yeah and throughout the sessions we are also going to show a uh, week training week examples for sure from every stage we are going to show you different training tasks uh, as example of how to train this concept. So in every session, there will be one, two, three tasks that you can take as a reference so that you can see how it works. And, um, and just a, a short uh, example no, of, of this, um, we can go, I sorry, we can go to one of the training tasks. This is for older players. Let's say that we are in the age group of uh, under 13 or under 14. Now let's put under 13 here. And af after we have seen all the, um, all the contents, all the concepts for every single block uh, for this age group, we can say, okay, coaches, one example of how we can work this content and this concept that we saw that it's important, no? Uh, one, one example. It's about possession. Uh, in this space, we play five against five plus two or three jokers, depending if we use that one in the middle according to the level of your players, two or three. And ball possession, where uh, the objective is to bring the ball from this uh, side zone that we have here with white and yellow, and this other side zone that I'm marking here. Yeah, we need to keep the ball first and bring it, try to bring it without losing the ball from one zone to the other zone. Okay, then how, uh, what rules we're going to have to organize this game a little bit? Um, we are going to have one player per team and one joker in each of these side zones. In the other side, the same. Um, and the players cannot change the zone. So, this, for example, this player cannot come here or this player cannot go there. This is not allowed. Yeah? This, not allowed. And this, not allowed. Okay? They need to play from their zone. Side zone, central zone, bigger, or the other side zone. Okay. Um, at, oh, sorry. Another, the second rule is that the attacking team will keep one player in one sub zone or mini zone inside their area and the joker will stay in the other side sub zone okay no one uh, no attacking player will be in the middle the same in the other side blue and joker okay then and the third rule is that the defender for example, if we look at this uh, black defender, as the ball is in the uh, in the side zone, in the opposite side zone, or in the central area, the defender has to choose one of the sides to defend. The defender cannot stay uh, in this central area. He has to choose, or she has to choose one side to defend. This is when the ball is in the middle or the ball is in the opposite side zone. If the ball has arrived into the zone, like here, you know, like this player has passed there, the defender defends freely and he must go to try to press. Now he defends freely if the ball has got in. But we put this rule and what is the sense of the rule? The sense of the rule is as the ball is here, 
all the players should start to look what happens in the other side. Like where is the most uh, free teammate in the direction where we want to go. No, so here you can work ideas of identifying the free teammate before you get the ball. You can uh, you can work ideas of how you can angle your body if you are diagonal or if you are straight to the ball to um, to maximize the space that you can see and to collect the information that will help you to decide better and if it's possible to play in progression quicker. Because what happens here in the beginning? In the beginning, this player pass here. And then the defenders may come to press a little bit. And uh, this player, when he gets the ball, starts to look where to pass the ball. And it's way too late. No? So we lose uh, advantages and sometimes we may even lose the ball. So we can, for example, train this idea. We could add other rules. No? For example, if the players are very good and they are very familiar, we could say every time the ball is played into the central area and comes back, into the same side zone, the defender has to go to the other side, has to change the player that he's defending. So that the situation for these players will be changing constantly and they will need to permanently look and orientate themselves towards the free teammate. Well, this is just uh, one small uh, example of task that we can do once the plan that we have as a club or as a team is clear and we know uh, how to organize the training week and where this kind of work can fit into the into the week uh, micro, micro cycle okay um as we said uh, we are going to explain a lot of ideas we're going to deliver a lot of information in terms of uh, training blocks but uh, that was uh, that was all for today i think it's enough um we can go into the q and a and also enrique if you have something to add it would be great to hear thank you paul for the session i think uh, it's been interesting and now users probably know coaches know a bit more uh, what they will find in the in the planning course explaining planning course i would just want to add and or or not add, just comment on on something that you already said that this course will be very interesting for coaches and also for academy directors because not only uh, will we explain how to create a planning, which uh, plan, how to, uh, which criteria to you need to follow, so that you can adapt based on on your uh, views as a coach, views as a, a club academy, but also we will provide the econo method uh, proposal for each age group. That means that we will be uh, giving the PDFs that you will be able to download and straight away for under six, under seven, under seven, under eight, each age group, you will be able to follow that, uh, that planning and already have something to start as a coach and be able to, to apply with certain criteria that we've already analyzed and is based on the economy method. So I think it's a very good an interesting course that uh, it it includes this practical side or this uh, this um yeah well, if you want to go yeah to the next um, yeah so it will include both the theory on how to do, uh, make your own plan and also the plan that you can uh, use straight away for next season and just before we go to, into the Q and A section uh, I would like to remind that for the next hour we are still having our express giveaway uh, i will be sending now also an email so that you guys have the link if not uh, please save it from the chat or use the qr to participate remember you must fill in the details and complete registration for the course and we will choose by lottery one winner who will ha have free access to the course so you will be able to access uh, this course for free and enjoy and learn how to plan uh, each uh, season based on which age group you're coaching. So uh, that's all from my side. I think we can now go to the Q&A section. And uh, yeah, just, I mean, I think I already explained this. So we start session one, September 25th. Today was session zero. So you guys have some days to think, but if you already made your decision, I would uh, register right now to get advantage of this express giveaway. 
I already see one question uh, from Milling, who's asking how to plan one week uh, training session uh, from under 10 to under 14. Um, yes, this question, um, it's, a, it's a very open question. So first, when it comes to how we plan uh, a training week, under 10, under 14, first thing is that under 10, under 14 players are already quite different. So there is no one way. They, we need to understand the particularities of every stage, of every age group. We need to understand um, what are the training blocks that we can have, uh, what contents we have inside every training block, what small ideas, concepts we have into every content, and uh, then we need to start to think how to link these ideas and organize it and organize them first into one year. What, what ideas I want to prioritize this year. Then I need to know how to sequence what I'm going to work first, what I'm going to work later. And then I need to think or I need to anticipate how much time I suppose I will spend working on that. Once I have all this, when I, once I have all this that maybe the econo proposal can help me on this. Then I can start to plan, okay, this month I need to work this. And this week I'm uh, specifically supposed to work this. Then how can I organize the week? So there would be one first part of a uh, warm up that we could work uh, on uh, motorical abilities, on perception abilities um, in, in different ways, we will explain. Uh, we can work uh, the main part or the core of the process in may, most of the days in the week is going to be individual fundamentals uh, with, the, with the little ones. Um, and there will be some uh, time during the week to work or to work specifically the team fundamentals. But as I said, very different how we do with 10 or how we do um, with a 14 year old. Thank you, Paul. We have uh, another question from Wayne, who's asking about which basic system do we introduce in planning uh, for the same age group, 10 to 14? Um, I'm not sure if I understand the question, what basic system, but at the end, uh, what we need to have very clear is uh, like the principles that we're going to do to organize the, um, the, the topics that we want to work, the training content that we want to work, uh, during all these years. And first, we need to uh, organize by age groups, by age groups, and then um, decide, like based on the um, psychological characteristics of the players in every age, and also based on the previous experiences of these players, we'll need to finally make a plan for this team, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there are a lot of uh, I, uh, steps that we have done uh, to prepare the proposal that we're going to be presenting you during the course. We have another question that I think I can answer myself and uh, perhaps Paul, you can help me. So uh, uh, coach is asking, what's the difference between the expert in planning course that we are starting now and the expert in grassroots? So the main difference starting the expert in grassroots course that we did uh, last year and that it's available to watch uh, and to purchase on the Econo Coaches Academy only included content until under 13 while the expert in planning includes content up to uh, under 19. Then the expert in grassroots course focus uh, mostly or or yeah mostly I would say in basic fundamentals while the expert in planning, uh, as we saw earlier uh, when Paul was, was presenting, not only focuses on the basic fundamentals, but we also talk about perception, team fundamentals, coordination. So it is uh, we, we offer here a more a broader uh, amount of content and how to plan it. Let's see, uh, we have a question from Logan who's asking what are your views on dealing with difference between each individual in the same age group who are not equally ahead or behind on the same content. So how to, to uh, uh, manage these players uh, who are not at the same point of learning. And for sure, we're going, uh, we going to be experiencing this 
in every single team, in every single level, in every single football culture. <laughs> it's impossible to have a group of players that are exactly homo homogeneous in, in the level in terms of one specific content. Um, we will talk also in the, during the course, um, and, and I think it's interesting to debate, like when, as a coach, I decide that it's enough now training this because the players have learned significantly enough the content that I wanted to train. And when is the moment to jump on to the next uh, topic? Um, and maybe next year we can uh, come back to this content and uh, add new things, no? new, new coaching points. Um, I think it's uh, it's our job as a coach is to try to uh, give um, the experience, the chance to uh, to train and to improve all the fundamentals, all the basic fundamentals to all the players. Obviously, some players will learn more uh, some contents and other players will learn more other contents. But this is just life and this will uh, define a little bit the profile also of the player in the future. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, I think we've now reached to the end of today's session. It's been interesting. Uh, I think that uh, coaches now have a better idea on, on what we mean by planning. And hopefully we can see uh, a lot of you guys in session one of the expert in uh, planning course that will start on uh, Monday, September 25th. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you, the coaches, for joining us and looking forward to see you. Thank you, coaches. See you. Bye-bye.